Hi everybody, I'm Susan Mobihill. I hope you've all been enjoying a lovely holiday season so far. Now that 2023 is just a few days away, it's time to talk about the 2023 garden season. And that's pretty exciting, right? For today, I'm going to talk about the different types of vegetable varieties that we plan to grow in our garden, and I'll explain why we chose them. And before we get started, I wanted to show you how you can find sources for any of them that catch your eye. So let's do that first. Okay, so you need to go to my website, which is susansinthegarden.com, and then you're going to go to the guides menu. That's where I put all of the resources on my website. And then just scroll down until you hit Susan's Garden 2023. Click on that. And then I'm just going to move this down a little so you can see it. Here is my chart of all the vegetables we're going to grow. You'll see the name of the crop, the variety or varieties we're going to grow, and then some suggested seed sources. This is by no means a complete list, but it does give you some ideas of where you might find the seeds. But remember to also check with your local independent garden center because they're going to have a great selection for you to choose from. Okay, let's go through the vegetable seeds. Well, I don't have a seed packet for the first one because I haven't ordered it yet. But we grow Taver artichokes. They have done really well in our Zone 5B garden. And they're very reliable and very productive. So that's the first thing on the list. And I better get my order in. Next up is arugula. This is heirloom rustic. And it grew great for us last year. It's pretty heat tolerant. It was not overly spicy, but it made a fabulous salad. For basil, we're growing Genovese. We grew it in our 2022 garden, and you cannot beat it for flavor and aroma. So we're looking forward to growing it in the 2023 garden. We love growing pole beans and for years I grew musica which has done well but in past years with the hotter summers it really struggles. So in 2022 I decided to try out two new to us varieties Fortex and Rattlesnake and Fortex was the hands down winner. You get long, tender beans, no strings, and they're very prolific. I also wanted to mention that the illustration on this seed packet is a little misleading. So Fortex beans are green. Just thought you'd want to know. For the past few years, we have been growing cylindrical or cylindra beets, and they are fabulous. You get huge roots that are very tender and tasty. And then last year, I grew golden beets. They grew really well for us, and they're very flavorful. Now, I just realized that I forgot to order Bell Star broccoli. This is one that one of my colleagues, Meg Cowden, recommended a couple of months ago. She had harvested a side shoot, and it was massive. And so I thought, you know, I want to try those too. Now, last year, we grew Monflor and that was very good. But you know, we gardeners are always seeking out the biggest of everything. So I am going to be ordering Bell Star from High Mowing Seeds. And of course, you'll see how they grow this season. We decided we wanted to grow cabbage this year, mainly because Bill thought it would be fun to make sauerkraut. And so he has chosen Copenhagen Market, mainly because it's 68 days to maturity, and it yields a nice size head of five to six pounds. Now I've ordered the seeds, but they haven't arrived yet. Well, talk about best laid plans. Here I thought I was so organized and I just found out that Bill had finished up two packets of carrot seeds that we wanted to grow this year, so I need to order them. So the plan is to grow Danvers 126, which is this packet here, also New Corota and Scarlet Nantes. Those have been pretty reliable for us. There are two varieties of celery that are good for northern gardens like ours. Tango, which I have grown for years, and Utah Improved. 
Now I haven't given this much of a test yet, so I decided I'm going to grow the Utah improved celery in our 2023 garden. And I'm going to skip the tango celery this year. I've grown Swiss chard in our garden for years, but I was so impressed with rainbow blend last year. In addition to being very flavorful and colorful, it was very plentiful. So this is definitely going in the garden for 2023. Even though I love trying new things, sometimes you hit a variety that just nails it. And when it comes to corn, we love sweetness by color. You can only find it from Ed Hume Seeds, but it is fantastic and I heartily recommend it. It is a fairly short season and extremely productive. For the past few years, I've been growing lunchbox cucumbers and they are super tasty, nice and crunchy and a very nice size. But I also am trying something new this year, which I've ordered, but they just haven't come yet. And that is Parisian hybrid cucumbers. So they're a shorter cucumber and they look very similar to a wonderful one that I was buying in a market while we were visiting Bill's family and I'm hoping I can duplicate them. So we'll see how those go. Well, here's another one that I've ordered, but it hasn't arrived yet. And this is an eggplant called Epic Hybrid. I primarily chose it because it says the plants are compact, like about two feet tall, and I want to grow them in my green stock vertical planter, so I thought they would be a nice choice. They mature in about 63 days, which is pretty quick and the fruits are seven inches long by three inches wide. So I think I'm going to have nice compact plants, but decent sized fruits to harvest. This is a kale that is fairly new to me. It is red Russian, and I was growing it in our winter garden. It was doing really well. I had been harvesting it. I really like the flavor, and it is fairly tender. So great in salads. And unfortunately, our temperatures got so cold so fast that they pretty much died. <laughs> but I like them so much, I decided I'm going to grow them during the spring and see how they do for us. Bill and I both really enjoy eating salads. And there are so many amazing varieties. I think the hardest thing about growing lettuce is choosing a few varieties so that you can test them out. So as you can see, I've got quite the lineup here. This one is new to me. We got it from Botanical Interests, and I'm not sure if it's truchas or trucas, but look at those beautiful leaves. And then I have crisp mint lettuce, and that name does not reflect the flavor. It's referring to the little roughly edge. So I'm excited about growing that. And then this one is a beautiful sort of a speckled lettuce. Bunte Forellenschluss, or something to that effect. I love butter crunch. I've been growing that for years. Look at this beautiful one called Merlot. Wow. And then Bronze Beauty. That is a gorgeous lettuce. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you know I have a soft spot for homegrown melons. I've been growing this Tuscan Napoli cantaloupe from Renee's Garden Seeds for quite a few years now, and it's always very reliable, and the flavor is out of this world. Now, I have to explain the packet of Alibaba watermelon seeds, because I guess I'm the eternal optimist. Spokane is not known to be the watermelon growing capital of the world, <laughs> but when I was looking through the Baker Creek seed catalog, there were two things that caught my eye primarily the fact that it matures in approximately 75 days, which seems amazing to me, and also that they produce 12 to 30 pound melons. And I thought, you know, I have got to try those. So I'm gonna give them a little bit of space in the garden and we'll see how they do. Bill enjoys growing onions, garlic, and shallots. And so he has chosen these two varieties this one is Italian Red of Florence. Now, in theory, they show it as a bunching onion. Bill plants them thickly, 
and then harvest some of them to give more spacing for ones that we leave in the garden so they can form a bulb. And then we love to make pickled red onions. They are to die for. But this is a great variety. And then he also has grown shallots called zebrun, and he really likes this variety. So we're giving it a go again in 2023. Another crop that was new to our garden last year is bow pack. It's a type of pak choy or bok choy. And Bill grew them. We thought they were fantastic. You can harvest them when they're very small or let them develop a pretty good size head. But they made a fantastic addition to our dinners. I haven't grown parsnips for a couple of years, but I keep wanting to grow them again because they're like a carrot, but quite sweet. They have a really rich flavor, and they're fantastic in all sorts of casseroles and other types of dishes. So this is Harris model. I have grown it before, and it is an excellent variety. I don't know if you can tell, but this is a massive packet of green arrow pea seeds. One half pound is the size that we buy because we love growing what we call gutter peas. And those are ones that we start in rain gutters in massive amounts and then slide them into trenches within our raised beds. This works really great. You possibly have seen my videos on my YouTube channel about this, or you will see how we're growing them in the coming season. But Green Arrow is our go-to shelling pea. As many of you know, Bill is the pepper grower in our family, and he really excels at it. So here's his lineup for 2023. He's going to grow Big Jim hot peppers, Biquino red and yellow blend peppers. Now these are a small pepper. Biquino means little beak. And I do need to clarify about this because Bill discovered that they need a good 100 days to reach maturity, at least. And we lucked out this past year because we had a really long summer. So the only reason he's growing them again in 2023 is because he has leftover seeds. So if you live somewhere where it's a short growing season, you probably don't want to choose this one. There's also chili pie. That is a small bell pepper. He was very happy with those last year. This is Numex lemon spice. It's a yellow jalapeno pepper. And then his all-time favorite sweet pepper is Marconi Rosso. Has nice thick walls, good sized fruits, and beautiful red color. And then Patapeno is a jalapeno pepper that I've been growing in the green stock vertical planter and we'll certainly grow them again because they are very productive and reliable. Boy, the sun keeps coming out, but I think you can see the seed packets all right. So I've got purple plum radishes and French breakfast. Both of them are super easy to grow as all radishes are. They mature very quickly and they certainly add nice color to salads. When it comes to growing pumpkins, I like to grow spooky. It is fairly early maturing, and it also is good both in pies and savory dishes. I primarily grow spinach in our winter garden, but for 2023, I'm also going to grow it in the spring. And two great selections are Butterfly and Matador. Both of them have good cold tolerance, and they're super productive. When it comes to summer squash, I love growing Cocozel. This will be our third season of growing it. It produces like you wouldn't believe, and I realize that's probably true of most zucchini varieties, but this one I really am sold on, and I'm looking forward to lots more zucchini in the summer. Okay, we're getting near the bottom of the list, folks, so thank you for hanging in there. So let's talk about winter squash real quickly. I am going to grow poti marron, and that is a great little winter squash, very tasty roasted. This is brand new for our 2023 garden. This is Burpee's Butterbush Butternut Squash. And normally, butternut takes quite a lot longer to reach maturity, and that is very iffy in our garden. 
Well, someone told me about this variety and it is supposed to mature in 75 to 85 days, which sounds fantastic. So I'm very excited about this. And then I'm going to grow Goldilocks, which is an acorn squash that grows on a bush. And those have been very prolific for us. I think this is my third year of growing them and definitely want to grow them again this coming year. You would not believe how many of those I harvested last summer. It was amazing. Since we're growing a few different varieties of tomatoes, I thought I would group them for you. So this first group is of paste tomatoes. Paste tomatoes are meatier, they're less juicy, so they're fantastic for making things like tomato sauce, salsa, and ketchup. The first two that you see, Federley and Gilberti, are ones that I've grown for a few years now. They are super productive, very reliable, and they do well in our growing season. This one on the right I am very excited about. This is a new to us variety called Supremo. It is a bush Roma, so still a paste tomato, and it is a determinate tomato. What that means is that all of the tomatoes, or most of them, ripen at the same time. And that's perfect for doing a canning project because you need a whole bunch of fruits that are ripe at the same time. So this one is supposed to mature in 68 days from when you transplant them out in the garden. And I think that sounds fantastic. These next two are small fruited varieties of tomatoes. So on the left is Solano Hybrid. That is a red grape tomato. And a few years back, we had received a sample plant of Solano, and it was fantastic. So when we saw that Totally Tomatoes had them in their catalog, we definitely picked up a packet of them. On the right, this is something new to me. This is a bush cherry called Patio Choice Yellow. It is a small plant, and I thought it would be great to grow in our green stock vertical planter. And as quite a few of you know, our tomato planting would not be complete without one or two Chef's Choice orange plants. These are slicing tomatoes, beautiful shade of orange, and they are the epitome of summer. So, yep, I'm definitely growing them again. And last but not least, we finally made it to the end, turnips. And I love to grow silky sweet hybrid. I've grown them for a few years now. You literally can eat them like an apple. And I know that sounds weird. They are crispy, but not too hard. They're flavorful super easy to grow, they mature quickly, and we literally eat them raw. This is not what you're thinking of when it comes to turnips, where there's the ones that are as hard as a baseball. These are fantastic. Well, I hope you found this interesting and helpful as you start making choices for your own garden. In case you can't tell, I am so excited that the next garden season is on its way. And I've got all kinds of videos planned to help you be successful. Thanks so much for watching today, everybody. I'll see you next week.